Back in 2009, Avatar was released in theaters. A movie about a bunch of blue hippie smurfs living on another planet. I'm just kidding. It was a movie about humans colonizing a planet called Pandora and using human alien hybrids called avatars to learn their ways and try to convince them to leave an area so the humans can mine unobtainium, which was a precious resource on the planet. However, the aliens called the Navi started fighting back, and the main character, Jake Sully, falls in love with one of the Navi and fights with them to protect their planet. The movie used amazing special effects and all new motion capturing, but one big thing stood out the most. It was in 3D. James Cameron used a modified fusion camera created to capture 3D and Simulcam, which allowed him to superimpose CGI images over live images in real time. Theaters used the Dolby 3D, Real 3D, and IMAX 3D to show the movie. Avatar became the second highest grossing movie of all time and also became the first film to gross more than $2 billion. Because it was so popular and the 3D was so good, it led to the 3D craze of 2010. All TV manufacturers jumped on the bandwagon and started creating 3D TVs. And HD 3D movies became the new trend. Networks even jumped in, showing some TV programs, sports, and even the 2012 London Olympics had an option to watch it in 3D. Almost every new movie released in theaters had a 3D version, whether it be filmed natively in 3D or converted to 3D. The first 3D TVs that came out used active shutter 3D, which works by only presenting the image intended for the left eye while blocking the right eye's view, then presenting the right eye image while blocking the left eye, and repeating this so rapidly that the interruptions do not interfere with the perceived fusion of the two images into a single 3D image. I actually have one of the first such 3D TVs to use Active 3D, the Sony LX900. They were able to show a full 1080 pixel HD 3D image, but the downside was the glasses were heavy and flickered. They dimmed the 3D image a little bit and they can cause headaches. They had to be recharged often and were expensive to replace. If you tilted your head just a little bit to the side or moved around during the 3D content you were watching, the image would blur so you constantly had to look straight ahead. LG saw this problem and came out with polarized 3D TVs, which worked by passing light through a circular polarizer, making the light twist in either a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. The glasses were much lighter because they didn't require batteries, and also much cheaper. You didn't have to sit directly in front of the TV and can tilt your head and still see a clear 3D image. The downside to this method was, you weren't getting a full 1080 pixels HD image. You were getting only 540 pixels for each eye, which reduced the 3D quality. Not only did electronic manufacturers make 3D TVs, but 3D cameras and video cameras became popular, so individuals could shoot their own 3D to view on their brand new 3D TVs. And since I was a 3D fanatic, I had a bunch of these to create 3D movies. Here is my old JVC GS-TD1 that came out back in 2011. It was able to shoot high quality HD 3D. I even bought a very expensive Cyclopidal Stereo Base Extender which allowed me to add much more 3D depth to all the movies I created. And also a macro lens adapter which allowed me to shoot plants and insects very close up in perfect HD 3D. I also still have a Sony A55 camera that allowed me to take high quality 3D photos and even 3D panoramic photos. And then I got the Fujifilm FinePix Real W3 3D camera, which is actually pretty cool because the viewing screen on the back used glasses free 3D to view the images or short videos I would take. And the 3D looks amazingly good. Why did I have all this? Well, I loved 3D. And back when it was popular, I created my own company called Blazin 3D, 
producing my own 3D movies. I used all this equipment to film scenic places or events here in Japan in high quality HD 3D and then sell it overseas on 3D Blu-ray. I used to have a Sony HMZ T3 which I then connected to my JVC 3D camera to view the 3D I filmed in real time so I could adjust the depth, the pop out and picture quality on location to make the best 3D possible. The first 3D film I ever created was called Fukuoka Custom Car Show 2011, where I showed off exotic Japanese cars with custom body kits and sound systems. Then I made Marine World 3D, which was a film of a large aquarium with all types of fish and sea life. This movie was full of 3D pop-out scenes and was quite popular. And my last 3D movie was called Hirado 3D. It was a film about the first historic Christian churches built here in Nagasaki, Japan. I also created a few more 3D movies. Fukuoka Custom Car Show 2012, showing off more Japanese exotic custom cars. Amazing Flowers, which was a film of a large flower park located in Kumamoto, Japan. And Mount Aso, which was a movie about a massive active volcano in Kumamoto, Japan. But by the time I finished editing them, the 3D craze died down, and not many were interested in 3D anymore. But with Avatar Remastered in 4K HDR 3D out in theaters right now offering some amazingly bright and perfect 3D, plus enhanced Dolby Atmos sound, can you get close to the same quality with the original Avatar 3D Blu-ray and old 3D TVs? And if so, which type of 3D offers the very best experience? And with the Sony HT-A9 upscaling the original 3D Blu-ray audio to 360 spatial surround sound, can you get a close to theater sound experience? Well, let's find out. I'm going to watch some scenes of Avatar on my Sony LX900 with active 3D, and the same scenes on my LG 5500 with passive 3D. On each TV, I've cut the brightness up to mimic HDR the very best I can. You always have to wake up. Let's start with the Sony. Using the active glasses, right away I'm noticing the flickering, especially on bright scenes like this one. The picture quality in 3D is very good, but the glasses do make it dim, and I'm noticing some ghosting also. You guys can see the TV flickering on the camera. I can't see this flickering when I remove the 3D glasses and look at the TV with my naked eye, but I do notice it very much with the glasses on, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, this constant flickering is just ruining the experience for me. So let's move on to the LG with its passive 3D glasses. Wow, right away, this is so much better. The picture is much brighter, more clearer, and there's absolutely no flickering at all. This opening scene with the water bubble and Jake being taken out of the hibernation chamber looks almost exactly like the 4K theater version with the bubble coming out right in my face and the depth extending way far back showing all the chambers in the background. The 3D just looks amazing. Let me try another scene that I remember looked amazing on the 4K remastered version. Holy crap this looks good! It's not that 4K super sharp crisp image with bright popping HDR colors, but it does look great and the 3D is just like the theater version with these spinning flowers coming right out at me. Alright, well what about the sound? Can my Sony HT-A9 with the SW3 subwoofer give me a close to theater like sound experience even though the Avatar Blu-ray is only in DTS HD 5.1 audio? Well, my neighbors aren't home, so let's crank up the system and find out.
right, so I'm literally blown away by the amazing sound experience I'm getting from this. I didn't expect it to be this good. The A9 is upscaling the audio to 360 spatial audio and sounds have been literally all around me and above me throughout this entire movie. This scene right here, I could hear all the helicopters right above me and then the large dragon assault ship hovering over the water, I can hear the water mist flying up all around me. And this scene where the dragon assault ship is firing the gas canisters, I can hear a few whiz right by my head, bouncing off the ground behind me. Then when the navvies shoot their arrows at the copter, I can hear their arrows bouncing off all around me. When the assault ship fires its missiles, they sound like they're flying right over my head and some of them are whizzing right by me. The explosions have some very good deep bass to them as well. And then the entire battle with Jake flying on the Banshee attacking the gunship helicopter and Trudy flying in, in her scorpion helicopter to help him, I can hear bullets and missiles flying all around me. The sound isn't quite as loud and good to what I experienced in the IMAX movie theater, of course. The theater had much deeper bass and better height effects, as it should for a $70,000 sound system. However, the Sony does come pretty dang close, I must say, and I feel it's a lot more immersive. Avatar is definitely a movie you need to watch on your Sony HTA9. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. With the upcoming release of Avatar Way of the Water, which will also be in 4K HDR 3D, will the 3D craze come back again? Will they start making 4K TVs that are able to output 4K HDR 3D? And will James Cameron release Way of the Water on a 4K 3D disc? I sure do hope so, because the remastered version of Avatar looked beautiful and was some of the best 3D I have ever seen. But until that happens, if it ever does, I'll continue enjoying my old 3D content on my old 3D TVs using my Sony HT-A9 to make them sound even better than before. With that in mind, I leave you guys with a glasses-free 3D trailer of Avatar Way of the Water to enjoy. Just close one eye, sit back, and you'll see the amazing 3D effect.